There are moments in automotive history when a manufacturer does something so absurdly ahead of its time that even decades later, engineers are still scratching their heads, wondering how on earth they pulled it off. And the Porsche Stuart Kuplug, which I definitely butchered, or BSK, as we'll be referring to it in this video, is one such moment. Designed for the Porsche 959, a car that was never meant to exist in the first place. PSK was a four-wheel drive system so advanced, in 1986 it made everything else look like it was engineered by men using sticks and rocks. This system was a masterpiece of mechanical trickery and electronic wizardry, developed not just to keep the 959 unearthly levels of traction, but to make it the most intelligent all-wheel drive system of its era, and arguably one of the most advanced ever built. But to understand the PSK system, you need to understand the 959 first. Now Porsche's original intention wasn't just to build a supercar, it was to build a technological showcase that would obliterate Group B rally competition, decimate all road-going competition and force engineers from Ferrari and Lamborghini into an existential crisis. The car was meant to be a rolling testbed of everything Porsche knew about speed, handling and most crucially, four-wheel drive. The 959 was the first Porsche to feature an advanced all-wheel drive system, but this wasn't your regular shove a differential in the middle of the car and call it a day approach. Oh no, the PSK system was active, it thought, it adapted, and it didn't wait for things to go wrong before it reacted, it predicted them. But how? Well, most four-wheel drive systems at the time worked in one of two ways, a fixed torque split where power was permanently divided between the front and rear axles, regardless of conditions. Think classic Audi Quattro or early Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive systems. Then number two, a reactive system where power was only sent to the front wheels or rear wheels when slip was detected, but this always seemed laggy and slow. The PSK did neither, instead it used an electronically controlled hydraulically actuated multi-plate clutch that could shift power between the front and rear axles preemptively. It didn't wait for slip, it adjusted torque based on driving conditions before things went sideways. You see at the core of the PSK was a central electronically controlled multi-plate clutch system, but not just any clutch, it had six separate pairs of friction plates, each one capable of independently adjusting the torque distribution between the front and rear axles. This meant that the system could infinitely vary power delivery in real time, depending on the car's acceleration, cornering and grip levels. And one of the most mind-bending aspects of the PSK system was how Porsche engineered a mechanical advantage into the car before the software even kicked in. You see they fitted the 959 with front tires that were 1% larger in diameter than the rear ones. Why? Because this meant that the front drive shaft and rear drive shaft would always be rotating at slightly different speeds, creating a natural slip in the system. This ensured that the multi-plate clutch had something to work with at all times, even under normal conditions, allowing seamless and precise torque adjustments without the lag that plagued many all-wheel drive systems at the time. Then a hydraulic system controlled the clutches, but it wasn't just slamming them open and shut like hammering in a nail. No, this was precise, Porsche-level engineering. The system was monitored by a series of sensors, measuring throttle position, as in how aggressively the driver was accelerating, steering angle, whether the car was turning, and how sharply lateral g-forces, i.e. how much cooling force was being generated, and then lastly, turbo boost levels, because of course, the 959 had twin turbos and the system needed to know when they were about to dump a hurricane's worth of torque into the rear axle. Using this data, the PSK system could alter torque distribution on the fly. Under normal conditions, it ran a 40-60 front to rear split, keeping the balance towards the rear for that classic Porsche handling feel. But when you floored it, the system sent up to 80% of the torque to the rear wheels to maximize traction. If things got slippery, it could shift up to 50% of the power to the front axle to keep the car from spinning into a hedge. And before the road going 959 even hit the streets, 
Porsche had already tested the BSK in the harshest conditions imaginable, the Paris Dakar Rally. You see, in 1984, Porsche fitted a prototype 959 with the system and sent it hurling across thousands of miles of desert. And it won. Then they did it again in 1986 and it won again. Not only did the system make the 959 nearly unstoppable on loose surfaces, but it also provided the blueprint for future all-drive systems in high-performance cars. Audi's Quattro had proven that all-drive was the way forward in rallying. Porsche's PSK proved that all-drive could turn a 200mph supercar into something you could drive through a blizzard without breaking a sweat. But why wasn't this system used more? Well, the answer is actually simple, cost and complexity. You see, the 959 was one of the most expensive and complicated cars ever built, and the PSK was a big part of that. It required high-pressure hydraulics, complex sensors, and sophisticated control units, things that at the time were not easily scalable. Even today, very few manufacturers have systems that can do what the PSK was doing in the 1980s. And although Porsche never directly used the PSK again, the principles behind it lived on. The modern Porsche traction management system found in the 911 Turbo and Cayenne is a direct descendant. Many modern all-drive supercars, from the Nissan GTR to the Bugatti Chiron, use torque vectoring all-drive systems that owe a massive debt to the PSK. But to end it off, the Porsche PSK wasn't just ahead of its time, it was from an entirely different timeline. Even now, almost 40 years later, most all-wheel drive supercars still can't match its real-time torque vectoring and predictive traction control. The PSK wasn't just a system, it was an engineering statement proving that Porsche could build a four-wheel drive system so advanced that the rest of the world would spend decades trying to catch up. But at the end of this video, please let me know what you guys thought of the video and what do you guys think of this insane system that Porsche made back in the 80s. I've always loved the 959. When I was really small, I got a 1 to 18 scale Porsche 959 toy from a friend of my dad and it was the coolest thing ever. Since then, I've somehow lost it in one of the moves we made. But that car I treasured, didn't even really know what it was. But as I grew older, I, I, I found out it was the 959, did more research. And I think that's one of the coolest Porsches ever made. It's not necessarily the prettiest, but all the technology and shit behind it is so cool. So I personally like it. But what do you guys think? If you guys enjoyed this video, please have a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys did enjoy this video, you'll most probably enjoy most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's someone else like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?